Okay, All back right, again. Back again. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, now, for people that don't know you, mm. how did acting come into your life? It found me. I wasn't looking for it. I just was asked by my physical education teacher in England to go for an audition. Um, and I said, eh. and they said, but you'll be able to get out of math. <laughs> and I went, that sounds good enough for me. Show me where the auditions are. So that's how I started. How old? But oh. Now this was theatre. So to 11, 12. 11 or 12? I'm sure I was about 11. Twelve. Well, yeah, had, you would have been. Yeah, yeah, you would have been. But I'm actually talking about f proper theatre auditions for theatre shows. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Before yeah. then, I did dance and drama and all that sort of stuff. But it wasn't. That was all learning. And you found a love for it, obviously. Yeah, it was great. What did you love about it? The escapism or yeah. the attention? No. Oh. Or both. As as an eleven year old. No. Funny enough, no. Not as uh, because my singing was a big priority in my life. It wasn't acting. Singing was huge. Singing, I was going to be a singer. Mm. I wasn't interested. Turn, in, turn towards me. I wasn't yeah. interested in, um, in acting as much as I was in singing. So for me, you know, singing was part and parcel of the whole entertainment thing. And that's why I went into musical theatre because musical theatre, singing, you know, you sure. can get your solo stuff on stage and all that sort of stuff. Screen didn't even come into my life until I came to Australia. So really it was all theatre for me. So that's how I got into theatre. And then I started getting the auditions. And then I never – but it was funny because as a child I didn't – I had more ego as an adult. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was a, when I was a kid, it, if I got the audition, I wouldn't even come home and tell mum and dad. The first audition I got, which was a big one, was uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, and that went all over London. And I got it. And it was weird because I was a brown kid getting – do you know what I mean? It's like that was unheard of in England. You never got a lead role. You weren't white. <laughs> it's funny, even though the apostles and Jesus were brown. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Middle so East. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so – and everyone thought it was really weird. And and, and then I got, I got the audition and – I never said anything to anyone, never went home, never told mum and dad. Or, and they found out by reading the newspaper because <laughs> I didn't know they were taking photographs and put up all the people that had gotten the roles. And that's when mum It was in me. the paper? No, oh, it was in the Daily News. Wow. Because <laughs> that was before I was born. Yes. So, um, and um, performing in front of large audiences mm. at that age mm. on stage mm. must be pretty... Oh. The most amazing feeling in the world. And it's very different. Stage is very different to film. Very mm. different to film. It's a very different high. Mm. And it still remains a high. It keeps, you never lose the novelty. Sure. You never lose the novelty. Whereas I found you can lose the novelty on set. Well, you know, I heard a theatre actor the other day. He's the actor that played Christopher Maltesante in, in oh, Sopranos. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sopranos. In Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah. He said something I'd never thought about, but yet it's so obvious. He said, uh, the difference with theatre and film and why I love theatre is because every night you're telling the whole story. Again, yeah, the whole thing. Mm. The whole thing. It's mm. not split up into no. scenes. No. and So s the performances can change depending on the audience. And they always do. Yeah. And he said that that, because I just never thought of it that way, yet it's mm. logical. Like I'm telling this story from beginning to end. Mm. Every time I'm on yeah, stage. Yeah, And you're telling it differently. Yeah. And you know why? Because you're growing in the character every day. You've got six weeks of six days of performances. Yeah. Is, is the theatre, you know, like in, in film, you, if you have a six-week shoot, you have a six-week pre, six-week yeah. post. Mm. That's, it's a guide, mm. you know. Mm. Um, bigger films, mm. six-month shoot, six-month pre, six-month mm. post. Mm. What is it? In rehearsals for theatre, it no. depends? No, no, rehearsals for theatre will, will be a lot longer than what oh, your, really? your actual job, you know, your actual six weeks of performances. Mm. You would do three months of rehearsals. Oh, okay. So your rehearsal is big. 
It's huge. Mm. It's huge. It's huge. It's big. Your pre-production is bigger than the actual nights of your performances. But when you actually start getting on onto your performances, you notice that because you're playing that character every day and you're telling the whole story every day, you're learning new facets about that character. Yeah. So therefore, you shift and evolve all the time. So, you know, your first night will be very different to your fifth night, to the seventh night, to the tenth night. Mm. to the end of the six weeks and it grows it's like and a, so it should it's like a character pr mm. possession yeah it happens and you slowly, gradually yeah you <laughs> slowly get involved it becomes very personal right. you forget an audience completely you don't even know they're there isn't that isn't but that must be a great thing it's fantastic it's fantastic and it's only when you 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 finish at times i remember it's only when you finish and you hear the clapping you suddenly go i'm on stage it snaps you out mm. that wow the clapping is like Oh. So what is it about film then? What's the high of film for you of acting in film? It's a different, it's a totally different high. It is a different high. It's, it's, you're still having to do the same. I see it very much the same. Um, a lot of people don't see theatre and film. They, they really put them in very different categories. Mm. I, I don't think I ever have. I think it should be exactly the same for both. I suppose your audience becomes the crew members mm. that surround you and you forget about them yeah. and inhabit the character. Mm. I mean, I suppose that's the purpose for, for, for an actor is to mm. possess the focus. character yeah. and, and be in that moment where you don't see no. yeah. those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So that you can be in the moment and be there all the time. Not just, you're not just a performance monkey. Sure. You know I, mean? I just, I always found it incredibly difficult on set when I was on set, mm. but I remembered seeing, you know, seeing the poor actors that would have to wait. <laughs> I don't think people realise that aren't in the industry, how much of a waiting game it yeah, is. It's huge. I mean, the crew works all the time, but the actors will come on for that moment mm. and then they get sent back and then, mm. but it's 80% waiting, well, am I right? that's exactly what Michael Caine said. Michael Caine says, I get paid to wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I do most of is wait. <laughs> But that takes a special type of person too. Yeah, it does. You've got to be quite patient. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. It's, 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 it's very different, Wayne, and it's different because like, unlike stage, everything is shot in pockets. Yeah. You know, you could start with, with the end of the film and work backwards and then, you know, because you're... You, so, uh, so a character on set in this story has to be in the moment, in the right moment at the right time because you're shooting everywhere, you know. So if your character has a huge character arc, then you have to be prepared to go yeah. from one extreme to another. At different times. At different times of when yeah. that schedule I think that is, takes, that's the skill. That's, that's the big thing. That's the skill of it. Mm. And I suppose you have to sort of rely on the conductor, which is the director, director to sort of go of to see ahead and see in the past and mm -hmm. go, that's, and communication, communication with mm. the director, huge. I mean, look, some directors haven't even been on set. You don't even see them. Mm. And you're having to take your instruction from the first. You know. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, or, or not so much. It hasn't been with me with the, 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 um, the, the camera guys, the, the DOPs. It hasn't been them. It's been the first AD or it's mm. been the writer standing by or something. Sure. There's, there has been times when I haven't seen the director very much on set. But when I, they are, oh, yeah. fantastic. I've worked with great directors who are so involved with their yeah. actors and they they care. They want to know that you care. So it's they a trust will game. talk, yeah, they mm -hmm. will talk to you and they'll ask you your opinion and what do you see and how do you, and I love working with directors like that. I think all actors would. Oh, it's yeah. great. And then you probably get those directors that you don't see. Mm. But they've employed you to for do that the job, role. yes, and they expect it, and they give you little ups and downs mm -hmm. and tweaks, <laughs> but they don't really get no. in, you know. No. I, I, you know, we know a friend, a mutual friend of ours that worked on all the Star Wars, yes, you know, and George Lucas is is known for sitting away in a room behind ah. fifty inch monitors with mm. headsets and everything, yeah. and it is like even he was saying when he was like on set. Mm. And seeing the actors' expressions after each take, 
They just didn't know what the fuck they were doing. <laughs> whether it was here, whether it was there, yeah. because don't forget, it's all green screen as well. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I remember doing one day full of green screen and this was for a corporate video and it just drove me insane. It drove me nuts. It was different. It was different in that what was cool is the illustrators had drawn all the illustrations of what we should be looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how big it was to get our eye lines and stuff. Mm. But I just found it so, it was like working in a factory. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. Half of, half of the fun for me of directing was escaping in that moment when the actors were on. Mm. Like an actor, we forget the world around us. Yeah. And, you know, that's how I measured what was the take I would use is when I'm fully immersed and I forget my surroundings. Where you are, yes. And I knew that I was pulled in by something. Mm. Like, and the only thing that can pull you in is real emotions. Mm. It's like if you see someone fake cry or or mm. they're actually crying, mm. it pulls you in. Mm. And I lived for those moments. Mm. And it was very hard on a set full of green screen because you were constantly oh, reminded of where you were. Mm. So I can understand when actors say, you know, it's just, it drives them insane a lot of the times. Because See, I haven't had very much experience with green screen, only a little bit, yeah. but not very much. Mm. I haven't had to do, you know, huge scenes. Yeah. I wouldn't have a clue how that would go. It sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like fun, but I've not had that experience. Now, yeah. short films, you've acted in a lot of short films mm. and I was because this is for people that also probably are your students or people that don't know you. Mm. But I'm just trying to put a bit of a timeline here. Mm, yeah. So, you know, you were a child actor in England and then, you know, you had four children, four sons under the age of six. Mm. Incredibly dif difficult. Mm. Then you divorced and you became a single mum. <laughs> yeah. How old was the how old was Tate your oldest when the divorce when you Eight. became so you were eight. He was eight. And he was eight. Taylor sorry. was mm. 18 months old. So the youngest was 18 months and the oldest was eight. Yeah. Wow. So obviously priority shift. Had and to. I mean, you, yeah. yeah, you couldn't yeah. be, <laughs> oh, let's yeah. do acting as well as being no, a no, mother. No, 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 I tried. I tried. <laughs> I thought I could do it all, you know. Well, so, mm. yeah. And you, I mean, you had some successful businesses during that time. <laughs> yeah. uh, exclusive business training was one. Oh, where my God. I've still got the certificate. I don't believe it. Oh, well. And that was, you would get lecturers coming in that to do were computer training. Computer for training for Lotus, Lotus 123. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. uh, for which people that don't know, Lotus 123 is like Excel. Excel package. Like, it's yeah, an Excel very package. Old. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mac uses its numbers. Um, and you'd go to corporate companies yeah. and they would use you to be to yeah, do the training, yeah. which was a great, that I was a great, great idea. It was a great little business. <laughs> I mean, you just was pretty much the producer or first AD in, yes. in a business. Putting things putting together. Putting everything together. Mm. Yeah. So you did quite a few of that mm. and you became a motivational speaker. That was the highlight of my life. Yeah. You became a motivational speaker. You affected quite a few lives with that. And it's not just in people's living rooms. You were in hotels and in ballrooms and mm. giving these huge speaks. You flew to Singapore to mm. give uh, talks over there. Mm. So th this was all part and parcel. Now, what? then you came back to film. As mm. the kids were a little bit older, yeah. you came back to film. Mm. You started to do a few shorts. I know because they were mine. You, they were yours. <laughs> um, what then led you into teaching? Because a lot of people know you as the the acting teacher here. Um, because of your this is success of your students, isn't that a good thing to say? It's a lovely thing to say. The success of your students who are, have now gone worldwide um, and, you know, on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And, I know. You know uh, it's actually project propelled your teaching as well in the eyes of a lot of people. Mm. You must be doing something right, you know. And um, now that's two worlds there. So people look at you as a mother. She's obviously done a successful job because look at her four sons. Look at her success stories of her actors. And then you headed into teaching mm. where, where I was getting at and you became a very good teacher. Where did that come from? You know, that's really easy. It's really easy. I had, 
consciously made a decision in my head that my as the children were growing up, my priorities were, my priority was the kids. Not at first. At first I thought, yeah, I could do this all. You know, I'll just pick up my four kids, go to Sydney, <laughs> come and live with you and Jocelyn and, um, and, and go for auditions and just keep hitting on doors. I never had a problem doing that. And I never used to, I had no fear where that was concerned. I thought I looked at it as something that was really exciting to do, get in the face of people, you know mm. what I mean? And say, look what it is that I can do. Um, and so I didn't have a problem with that. But then, you know, suddenly you had to come down to earth and go, hang on a second. You are a single mum. You're working three jobs. With four kids. With four kids. Um, and, you you know, you I had, yeah, I, I had, um, uh, there was a lot to think about because they were still going through schooling and everything. So it was really hard. So I was sitting there going, well, I can't pursue this because this is not the right time to pursue it. Sure. Uh, because my kids are everything right now. And I, and because I was the only parent, if you know what I mean, their dad was obviously, their yeah, dad yeah. was around, but their dad was quite far away. Yeah. Um, so it was me. And if I didn't look after them, then what was going to happen? Yeah. You know, and I wasn't prepared to risk yeah. my children going off the rails. It just wasn't Risking career is one thing, but, yeah, but you no, can't do it with no. your kids. So I made a conscious decision. I wasn't going to pursue acting. That's what I consciously made. And it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt because no. that was just the way it was. It was mm. The kids meant that much to me, so it wasn't. Mm. So then it was truly, you know how you hear that, um, what is it? You hear that thing where, you know, if, if you don't make it as a, if you, if you can't make it as an actor, then you'll most probably fall back to teaching, that kind of thing. Mm. I felt like that. I felt like, well, it's not like I can't be an actor because I know I have the capabilities. Sure. I know how, the, but you know what? It doesn't matter. I've decided not to do it. So, and I've got lots of knowledge to in part, yeah, I didn't know how great, how 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 good a teacher or how great a teacher I could be. I had no idea at that stage. All I knew was I knew the craft. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And a lot of the craft that I knew wasn't taught by the training that I did. A, a lot of it was, but a lot of it is is you. You are training. I was training all the time, watching films, doing monologues, sure, uh, looking at dialogue, um, finding different ways of immersing into a character. I never got told all those things. I know. You, know, the, you, you did it. I, Fern knew Fern more than anyone else did. So I knew what would push my buttons. I knew how I could learn. I knew Fern was a practical person and not just all books and, and theory. Okay, so Fern, get in front of the mirror or get into a room and imitate this. Imi Do you know what I mean? So a yeah. lot of the learning I did myself. So a lot of that I bring into the classroom now and say, look, it worked for me. Don't know whether it worked for you, but it might work for you. Mm. Try it this way. Try it this way. And a lot of the time, I can honestly say 99% of the time I've had actors come back and, you know what, Fern, it worked. Mm. You know what, Fern, you're right you know, but it's getting the actors to find their way. A lot of the, the, <coughs> a lot of the learning becomes the teaching. Yes. Too. Yes. So you're, you're learning as you're teaching. Hmm. And, you know, I think with, with acting, a lot of it is psychology. Most of it is psychology of understanding human behavior character. Yeah, absolutely. And you had a reservoir of experiences. Mm. Leading and also you've got to remember that the, the, my dream back then was to be able to put, because personal development to me was huge. It changed my life. Mm. Like it changed a lot of our lives. Some of the stuff that we learned back then were personal development and mind, how, what the mind can do and all that. That was a big thing. It, my dream was being able to put both the, the two loves of what I, I love together. So personal development with acting and then picking up, my very first book of Strasbourg and realizing that he felt exactly the same way in terms of personal development. So a lot of his book was to do with oh, metaphysics. Okay. A lot of his book was to do with metaphysics and personal development and knowing your boundaries and knowing, and straight mm. away I clicked because I went, well, this works for me. Yeah. Maybe the goal of being able to put these two loves of mine together in a classroom can actually happen. And I was able to achieve that when I wrote, Film and Television Institute's first D diploma. diploma course, yeah. Diploma. So I put them together and I was able to get I remember so much. Yeah, mm. I was able to get so much out of the actors that it showed me that it was imperative that actors learn more about themselves. Well, it, it's a healing process, right? Yeah. 
Of course, yeah, huge. You know, half of it is understanding who you are and accepting yes. that. Yeah. And to be able to take on new characters yes. of different yeah. scripts and films. Yeah. So that's how I, and, and when I started at, uh, doing teaching, I s- really started to enjoy it because I could start, I was seeing progress. I was seeing things happening. Mm. Um, seeing changes happening in front of me with, t- and I was thinking, this is great. So it made me. So it's working. Yeah, this mm. is this is working. This is great. It's working. So it was it also your style of teaching too. Yeah, it's a little different. Well, all, no, but <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's very important. It, it's the the teacher is a very important person. You can have a knowledgeable person on the craft, mm. but if that person can't teach, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Yeah, and I and working in the education system, both of us mm. have. I mean, we see it a lot. Yes, we see we people that are, are brilliant at what they do, but have yet, master's degrees, but, but can't stand but up, but can't and teach, teach, can't can't share that knowledge, mm. in a way because everybody learns differently. Mm. We all have our different ways of of taking in information. So our teachers have to assess that. Mm. So you became known as a as a good teacher, <laughs> and I think part of that <laughs> was your passion in the craft. Mm. Oh, yeah. Came through. My teaching. In your style of teaching. Yeah. As in you demanded the best of what a person can offer. And if mm. they didn't give you that, you let them know. Yes. And you were hard on them because yes. you've been hard on yourself. Yes. And and I think that's what's attracted a lot of people to um, the Nicholson's Academy of Screen Acting, NASA. I think a lot I of people. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I've always actually it's something I've always wondered because I get a lot of st- you know I do speak to a lot of people who know me, not because they've met me or not, but because of what they've heard. Um, a lot of actors have come back to me and said there are so many people that would love to come and train under you, Fern, but you scare them. Um, or they don't feel that they're quite ready or blah, blah. And I, I've kind of gone, oh, that's cool, you know. And a lot of actors have turned around and said, you know, but she's 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 not like that at all. She's, you know, what, what are you hearing? Because all your, you don't seem to understand that Fern is doing this from a very different place. She's not just ranting and raving for the sake of ranting and raving. She's doing this because she's getting something from you, yeah. you know. But um, so I don't know. I don't know what my reputation is out there. I know that people know that I teach. I know that people know that I teach. It, it's kind of unorthodox. I I do get passionate. Um, some people may not. It might not be conducive to some people's learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. That Again, you said completely right. Teacher is very important. You need to have this trust that happens between a teacher and a student. Do you know what I mean? And and it takes a while for that teacher to be able to say, you need to be able to trust me. Yeah. This is what I can do. I just need you to see that you can do it. Yeah. Once you've done it and once you've opened that door and you can see that you have the ability to do it, then the trust factor opens up a bit more. It's yeah. Like, okay, I'll listen some more. Because once more. you've got that trust, mm. they will give it their all. They'll give everything. I mean, I even in my teaching, I spent like the first day – I spoke about the uh, longevity of story and I brought up some of the old stories from Greek mythology. Mm. But I had to, what I had to do with them is I had to get them to see that I could identify with their world. Yes. I understood who they were, understood where they're coming from. But here is what you are going to learn mm. if you just trust me. Yes. And I can trust you. Yeah. And once that trust was built, they saw the passion that came in of why. And they knew where I was, it was there. coming from. I wasn't there for the paycheck. Yeah. Um, I was there to bring out the storyteller mm. in each person. Mm. So I may not have been the greatest filmmaker, but what I can say I was was I had the ability to reach in and and bring out yes. the storyteller yeah. in somebody. Yeah. Getting them to understand their own voice in this world, mm. that was very important to me because it's very unique to see. Mm. Even today, somebody with a unique voice that has unique stories from their past, from themselves. Yeah. It could be science fiction, it mm. could be whatever, but it's got to come from them. Mm. Um, trust was a big thing for me. Empathy, trust. Mm. Once you've got that with your students, 
um, it's a two way street. Yeah. And then from there, you start inspiring each other. Mm. You know, and half half the job was was that getting them to understand that world, getting them to have fun in that world, yeah, getting them to let go of their past selves, yeah, ego things like that. that that's, the, that's the biggest thing. That's the hardest thing, biggest thing. There is a, a lady on Facebook at the moment. Her name's, I think she's from LA. Uh, I think her name is uh, Amy Jo Bergman. And I love some of the stuff she puts up. In fact, one of the ones that she keeps putting up all the time is an actor does not need to um, um, self- Promote, promote themselves, mm. that they don't need to get on Facebook and show every audition that they're going on or every film that they're doing or every thing that they're doing in Taiwan, um, Malaysia, uh, Kazakhstan. You know, it's not yeah. necessary. Um, and she talks about this and it's quite interesting because a lot of the people that have ticked and said, yes, I agree with you, are people who self-promote. It's quite interesting. Oh, so they, they see that they as see that someone, someone else. else. It's, it's someone else that self-promotes. Can't you see, you know, this? And I sit there thinking, why do you want to do that? I've never understood it. Mm. Why, why do you want? I mean, look, yes, I've done a lot of stuff. And in the late stages of my life, when I say late, I mean, you know, the, the age I am now and, and, and still being able to get wonderful opportunities which mm. I have been able to get on, you know, small local stuff to middle local stuff to international stuff to yeah. overseas stuff. It's still all there. It's, it's, and, you know, I'm not 20. I'm not 30. Mm. None of my students, I, I doubt very much if any of my students even know what I've done. Yeah. Someone turned around to me and said, why don't you tell them? Because, you know, you're NASA. If they know that. No. No, why? Why? If you're if you're going to put on the TV and you happen to see me, wonderful. In fact, having said that, your ex filmmaker at FTI sent me a message the other day and said, "Fern, so lovely to see you. I just saw you on Itch. Can't believe it. Yeah. Told my my sons love the show. Uh, just want to say congratulations. It was such a lovely and it really was. Itch was a Bloody lovely little film. It really was mm. a lovely ten-part well, series. series. It was a ten-part yeah. series, yeah. Um, and 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 it's coming up to mm. um, um, season two. So you know this is this is great. But let them see your work. I under, I do understand why, mm. but I, I I do think there's a big difference. We spoke um, people sharing their journey, the good and That's bad. That's different. It's different. That's but different. people doing the self. Now you're teaching. You're yeah. teaching. You're le- you're you're making people go. Hey, you know what? I've had to have to have handled this and this is what I found. And this is what different. I've learned yeah. from this journey, that's from this different. audition. So you're talking about self-promoting. Yeah. Themselves. Look what I've done. Look what I'm doing. Look how, you know, fantastic sure, sure. things are. And I'm heading off to the stars and the Golden Globes and you're not. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. I don't understand. Sort that. of puts, puts them on a back, back foot. It puts them on a back foot and it also puts a, an immense amount of pressure on them as well. And they don't seem to understand that because people are now expecting something. Yeah. And when you keep seeing somebody going up for every audition, then all you sit there doing is poor guy just doesn't get anything, does he? <laughs> so, so it can go to the it negative. It can go to the negative. It can go like, well, I keep seeing all these auditions, but does, is he actually getting anything? And, and when and if they get anything, where can we see it? Um, and, and where is it being promoted? And who's the, who is it? Yeah. I want to see it. You know, so all I'm saying is it's just this, that, that, that sense of acknowledgement and fame and fortune and I need people to know that I'm good and I need people to know that I'm wonderful and, I, you know, I want people to congratulate me, tell me how great I am. It's not helping you. Yeah. I just wish so they let, would. So let, let the work speak for itself. Yes, and, and love what you do. Yeah. Do it for nothing. Yeah. Love what you do and enjoy it for Enjoy the craft for the craft's sake. And you'll be surprised what doors open because you don't expect anything. You know, half the That's, stuff that I've received yeah. have, has been a gift because it's been something that I never, ever in a million years thought I would ever have the opportunity of doing. At my age, you've got to be kidding me. But you see, it's there. Yeah, I think I think it's it's that whole point of uh, letting go. You know, like Leave the, it alone. the lessons you learn from that book, The Alchemist. You know, yeah. just just trust trust in that process. Let it go. Don't grab onto anything too tightly. No. Um, let it go. Enjoy the, the journey. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the journey. process, mm. and and just trust in that. Yeah, and also see everything, including auditions, as just a learning process. I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Mm. What did I learn? What did I do? What, what will I do next time? 
That yeah. But you don't walk into an audition and go, I've got to get this or my no. life comes to an end. Yeah. Well, you know, well, that adds pressure in the audition. And you, they see it. Pressure. They see it. They mm. feel it. They know you're desperate. And they. Now, that's that's your next part of your journey. Your next, like, you were a renowned acting teacher that everybody knows, and you've got a successful um, uh, school with successful students. Mm. How did it go from there to suddenly going back in front of the camera? Because <laughs> because you were you were quite content and fulfilled mm. with uh, NASA and as an acting teacher. Yes, I was. What made you come back in front of the camera mm. and just turn this way a little bit? Oh, sorry, just got the camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What brought you back in front of the camera? I hadn't had an agent since I was in my early 30s. Never thought I'd get an agent ever again. Um, Hallie from Film Bites was actually the person I think that actually got me in front of the camera again. I really believe that. It was Hallie and Shanta because every time they rang me up for a audition or something had come up, a gig had come up. The first thing I used to do is think about which actor in my class would be really good for this. Yeah, logically I, you would do that. Yeah, mm. so I, I didn't have time to think about myself. No, not me. I just, I know an actor who could though. Mm. So I used to do this all the time. And uh, I never, uh, and there was one audition that she sent me. She said, no, 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 Fern, I'm actually asking about you. And I remember the first thing I thought was, oh, oh. That, <laughs> that's how I felt. oh, really? Do I have to? And, and then I'd say yes, because I felt a bit bad. And I said, yes, come on. And then I'd get there and Shanta would look at me. And, and I'd this have is to the honest truth, though. Honest, so you're getting the honest truth from me. Because people might go, well, you're not excited about no. somebody calling you for an But no, your when, priorities were your students. My priorities were my students, my business. Yeah. Um, it, that's all it was. Yeah. Um, and it has to you've got to remember that. Uh, that had been for years. It yeah. wasn't just one or two years I'd done yeah. this. I'd done this for over 20 years. Yeah. So um, for me, it was a natural thing of going, no, no, look, but I do know an actor who might be really good at this. Until Hallie one day turned around and said, Fern, I'm actually thinking about you. Anyway, I had to go into Film Bites to get the screen test done. And I rocked up at Film Bites and you should have seen me. I looked, I must have looked 30 years older than I was because I just didn't want to do it. And I remember sitting there going, Shanta, and she'd say, Fern, I'll make you a coffee. Just come in and let's look, let's just have some fun. Can we do that? And then I'd do it and I would. I'd have some fun. I'd think, oh, that was really cool. And it was only after the, 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 that I'd do it that I'd go, they were very crafty. They're very good film bites. Oh, they're very clever. Now, for those who don't know, they're a <laughs> casting agency. They're not just a well casting a agency. School. There is a school, there is a casting agency, and there's also a higher level casting um, platform that they've uh, started called Creative Soul Management for all their professional actors that have done some, you know, big stuff and have continued to do big stuff. Sure. Um, so they're extremely good. They're the highly recommended in terms of their actors, their teachers, um, and I've known them for many, many years. So highly recommended. Anyway, um, but they're very clever. They're very clever. Oh, wow, they're really clever. I think because also <laughs> part of their success as well is how, I mean, Hallie has – Oh. Such a gentle nature oh. about her. Even like she could be an astute business person, but she has such a gentle she nature. Yeah. She's beautiful. And it's that gentle nature goes so beautifully with her tenacity. Yeah. She has this tenacity about because I mean, she's, she used to be a she was a filmmaker, and and it comes from a, mm. a, a passionate place. And it comes from a passionate place. Mm. She is there because she truly, and you don't get much of this. She's there because she truly wants it to happen for you. Mm. I can't express that anymore. If you are willing to do the work and you show her that you're stars, sky's the limit. She'll take off her. So what her what, coat what for happened you. with you that didn't want to be there? <laughs> didn't want to be oh I just didn't want to be there uh, I know and a lot of actors go Fern I can't believe you're saying this and I'll, I'll you know someone's going to bring it up one day watch but um I didn't I didn't I didn't think I'd had the time I was running a business for God's sake I was doing stuff I was working film and television institute SAE you know doing counseling stuff I was you know yeah I remember um, yeah so <laughs> it was like oh, really I'm not gonna have the time to do this anyway 
surprise, surprise, I start getting roles. And 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 one of the, the, the ones that really got me there, I've got to thank my very old friend, Annie Murder Monks. I mean, Annie and I have known each other for many, many, many years. And um, it was, uh, I invited Annie to one of my courses and she was great. She spoke to the students. She, you know, gave them great information, showed us lots of fantastic showreels, showed them all. And it was lovely having her. And she ended up actually ringing me saying, Fern, I've got something here you might be interested in. Now, it was a small role, um, but it was a role. Mm. And I hadn't been in the room for, oh, 30 years. I hadn't been in the room for an audition. So when I went, the very first thing that happened as I walked in was um, Annie saying, Fern, I do apologize, but the role I wanted you to go for has actually been taken. So I just looked at her and I think my, all my shoulders went down and went, oh. And she said, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. I still want you to do this audition. I went, oh, okay, mm. let's do it. So pressure's off. Pressure's off. Mm. Had a great time. Really, I thanked her for that because it was like, oh, I have not felt this for a while. Anyway, I ended up getting a role um, and it was a very small role on the Heights. And I got to work with um, an incredible director, Andrew Proust, who unfortunately, you know, um, passed on not f not long after right. the uh, first. Yeah, I remember you saying you, you learned some incredible tips. Oh. Um, from this from director. Him. Isn't he, that a good thing though? Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was fantastic. And and going with that kind of direction, and it t a totally different kind of direction, but going with that direction, I thought, oh, I really learned something from this fantastic. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that. And then other things came up and I thought, you know what? I'm really enjoying the audition process. Didn't think anything else. I really enjoyed that audition process. So I rang Hallie up and I said, look, if anything comes up and it comes up and it's in the room, even if you don't think I can get it, can you send me? And she said, why? And I said, because I need to start to like being in the room for auditions. Mm. And I haven't done it for so many years. I need to get practice. So it's not about getting the role. For me, it's just going in and, and getting yeah. it. So she did. She kept putting me in front of people and I started to really no, enjoy it. But what's the funny thing is you kept getting the I role. kept getting the role. I did. <laughs> That must be – you were there for practice and you kept I was getting – And I was very shocked because it would be Hallie um, for, for the, 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 the the big one that I got. You know, it, Hallie rang me and said, oh, you got it. And everyone else in the room started jumping up and down. I didn't know what I got because <laughs> I hadn't heard of it before. Everyone else knew it. My kids knew it. My kids knew what it was. And everyone else knew it. And I thought, oh, okay. oh this is the series that this we shall not name – because of Two, yeah, press agents yeah, uh, yeah, haven't yeah, come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and and then I started getting nervous because I started realising how big this was. Mm. And uh, Isn't that wonderful yeah. though? It's a wonderful thing. Ooh, like, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> like, I mean, what we can say, and we can't tell you what the series is, but it's a huge series and it's uh, it, I think the platform, I'm not going to say yes or no, but the platform I think is Netflix. Um, now, now, you, now you're coming into some like international bigger films. I mean, you were in a big film before that, uh, which we can talk about. It yeah, we was can. Dirt Music. Yes. And uh, by Gregor Jordan. <laughs> yes. No, you know, the funny thing with Gregor Jordan is his first film, he came to Jocelyn and David's production company, Two, two Hands, I think it was, uh, and David with turned Heath it Ledger. down. And David turned oh it down. Oh my gosh. Because uh, at, at that time. So that was Gregor Jordan's first film. He won his. He, he got noticed because of his three, I think, three-minute film, One Shot, One Khan. And uh, wow. it was called Swingers. I, I love that film, Swinger or something. Um, but it's funny how things come around. And now my sister is now acting, being directed by Gregor Jordan, who's <laughs> who's done massive films since. I mean, mm. I think he did Ned Kelly with Heath Ledger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ed Harris, I think he did Buffalo. I know. I was yeah. really – I didn't know that he was that huge. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I knew that the actors that were on board were huge, and they were that was amazing. Kelly McDonald, Kelly McDonald, David Wenham, David Wenham. Yeah. Mm. Um, I wish you'd known that Martin Scorsese directed Kelly McDonald's in the first Boardwalk Empire. Oh no, you've got no idea. I had to you know what? I knew she was in Boardwalk, <laughs> but I had forgotten that Scorsese had, had you know, yeah. and also, I, I, you know, you know, I kid you not, meeting those two guys for the first time. 
you didn't go up to them. They came up to you, hands yeah. outstretched. Hi, the name's Dave. How are you? You know what? That's what they were like. Kelly was gorgeous. David Wenham was gorgeous, and we shared beers together. We shared laughs together. You know, it was such a comfortable set way. Yeah. That you wouldn't have thought, you know what I mean? I mean, look, I played the tiniest role, but by God, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Because my tiny role hated Kelly McDonald's character. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, 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 I loved it. And when we went to the premiere here, we had a good laugh because the, the, the line that I say, one of the lines that I said actually made the cinema laugh. And I thought... There it is. I've done my job. <laughs> yeah. I, I had were, that line. It went out well. You elicited an emotional response <laughs> in an audience. One line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was great. Uh, so, yeah. no. But it was, was the good. process. Yeah, it was yeah. the process mm. of being on a big film, understanding, yeah. you know, understanding that sort of, because it's a very different dynamic to shorter things, yeah. even probably oh, yeah. TV. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, no, different done. to TV. But yeah. now how is that different to a huge Netflix series? The enormity, it's that you can smell the money. <laughs> yeah. You can smell the money because people are quite easily, producers and stuff quite easily go, mm, nah, I've just spent 35000 on that, but I've changed my mind. Can we just redo that, please? And hearing that, you sit there going, Coming from a world where, where $35. Yeah, 35 <laughs> For, <laughs> for a take, <laughs> um, you know, back in the day, yeah. putting in twenty dollars, hoping that you get money back yeah. out so that you can buy tapes yeah. for your short film. But and and also and also, there's something else I have to say. When they're calling action on set, you are hearing it from miles away. That was weird, you know. I'll be reading camera lights mm. as you go, and you're hearing action, 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 and it's like reverberating yeah. through this huge All the studio. Oh, the, um, the, that one action is that echoing. That one action is echoing. Oh, okay. and, then, and then you're hearing it from every, uh, what do you call it? Um, all Two the way. different. Yeah. yeah. So then you're hearing it from, okay, so that guy's just gotten hold of that guy who's gotten hold of that guy. And you're walking on live sets. No, you don't understand. It's huge. Yeah. Live action sets. Never thought I would. And it made me think of, oh, my God, can you imagine what it would have been like to have worked on Star Wars? What it would have been like mm. to have worked on Game Aliens? Of Thrones you know, and... all these things because their set design. Yeah. Well, that's what got me with this place was their set designs were like. I was in awe yeah. walking around with my mouth open. That's what Jocelyn was saying. Uh, when Jocelyn, actually, you know who took me for a tour? I, I did the tour of the Moulin Rouge by with Grant. Oh, did you? And he took me the, uh, through the stage and things. But when Jocelyn said, she said she worked on the Red, Red Planet, Planet with Val Kilmer, oh, you know, but she was in the production design department. She loved that department. Oh. But she organised the finances and she said exactly what you said. She kept ringing Warner Brothers in America saying, what's the budget? Yeah. And they wouldn't give it one. They said, we will let you know when you oh, exceed yeah. the line. And they were spending ridiculous amounts of money, mm. like ridiculous amounts of money every day building spaceships and things. Mm. But it was a, she said, that's oh. when suddenly you, you realise you're in a different ball game. Totally Even different. to the independent Australian films. The independent mm. Australian films, you fought for that $8 million, $9 million. Mm. And it's a lot of money. Come Here on. It it's is. a lot of money. Here it is. And, mm. But now you've got... You know, them spending 120 grand, like a, a, I think it was a week or, or less than that for just materials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that must have been f like for you as an actor, you've, you went from, which is a nice thing to say, you went from stage to short films mm. through to the teaching and mm. seeing your students get on huge Netflix uh, series. That was so exciting. Um, mm. I mean, uh, we've seen... Uh, Catherine, Catherine and Cody. Yeah. Like I, I remember watching House of Cards. Yeah. And oh, no, no, it, he was in House of Cards. Yes. But I remember see, I was seeing Cody in the assassination of Gianna oh, Versace. Versace. Didn't yeah. know it was him. No way. And it was about an episode after that. I, I suddenly <laughs> just yelled out on the couch, oh, that's Cody. Cody. Yeah. yeah. I've not seen, would you believe, I haven't seen 13 Reasons Why, but I, I did see Catherine on Ellen DeGeneres talking about yeah. it. Yeah. So it must, you went into teaching and then you went into TV. Mm. Went straight in, yeah, into TV. TV into to a feature, feature film. film. 
to a huge Netflix series. No, no, then back to TV. <laughs> back to TV. <laughs> then I did a bad, yeah episodes on on itch yeah um and then i actually got an i i can't i don't know whether i should say this or not but i actually did get something else but i was in new orleans at the time visiting mm. my son and his new baby mm. um so i wasn't able to get it i didn't end up getting it that would have been a fun one to do because that was uh, i think it was i'm um i'm i met a girl and i was playing an indian woman in a deli oh really <laughs> I love. They actually said that my audition was adorable. I look at it and I laugh because I, I I've thought seen it was that. great. Have I've seen you? that one. No. Yeah, the one you filmed. Oh no, that, no, that, that was, was the one that with Shanta. With Shanta that yeah, I yeah. mucked around okay. with. But yeah. So and then from there to yeah to the big one. Now yeah. is it? You must miss that sort of closeness. You know, when things are so huge, they mm. become like a factory. You become like you know. Everything is compartmentalized, or do you still get that close feeling of depends on story who and no, d depends on what. Well, the thing is, when you get the the big stuff, they they armor you with everything, so they give you all the ep episodes. That's the wonderful thing. You don't often you don't often get that. They give you everything. They give you all the episodes, and they go right. Here's the story. Oh, okay. It's fantastic. Like so for the show ten. that we can't name. Yeah. I got you all got, of them. Oh, yeah. really? No, no. I, I knew the whole that. story. Wow. I knew what those 10 episodes were about, who I was, who the people that I was going to be dealing with, the relationships I had with those people, all those sort yeah. of things. So it gives you a real big, like they That's are, good. they just give you this whole thing and go, right, here, here it is. And this is, you know, the audition process was different. You didn't get that. You just got this thing saying, okay, I want someone that looks like this, that behaves like this, has a New York accent, you know, and then, um, and, and, and that was the audition that I did. And it was, mm. I've got to thank Hallie because Hallie was the one who said, hey, why don't you try doing it like this? Um, Fern, do you eat Chinese food? Yes, I do. Well, can you eat it with chopsticks? And I went, I'm the only Asian in Western Australia that doesn't know how to eat with chopsticks. <laughs> But I will shovel whatever I can yeah. in my mouth while I do this audition. Oh, that was a great audition, and that, that was good. That got you. That got that me got that one. Into, the big, the, into the big. Is one. it? Is it? It's. It's almost. The further you get, the easier it gets because. I wouldn't. I can't say that, but it's <laughs> almost. <laughs> sorry, as soon as I said say? that, I'm like, I'm going to get beaten up by a lot of people. <laughs> but you know, I, what I'm saying is, is your face. As, as an actor starts to get known for certain characters, mm. your name gets out there a lot more. So, you, you know, one thing leads to another that leads to another that leads to another. Not to say that you still you still have to audition uh, and get those roles, mm, but at least you you've got a bit of a, a, a resume, a bit of a repertoire behind you I now. think when you do that, it's like I remember Hallie saying, you know, you – you audition and you get the roles. And, and I'd been very fortunate because the first four auditions, I got all four roles, which was great. And 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 that apparently is a really good thing to have. I You've got to remember, this was, even though I've been in the acting arena for so long as a teacher, you don't, you've got to understand yeah, that my muscle, new. yeah, it, my muscle for acting was like, oh, I know what I want to do. I know what I can do, but I don't know the ins and outs of what is expected or what you need or do, do you get do yeah you know what it's, I mean? a, it, so, it's that muscle that you don't needs know to be exercised. Yeah. yeah so when you do it I, I was finding out a lot of new information from Hallie because Hallie would say now because of this fern we can do that and because you've done this we can actually do this now mm. and then I'd start oh is this how it works because I didn't know mm. oh so this is how it works and you know they can actually and of course when you start doing things like that then they your agent will tell other really large production casting directors and agents that this is what you're doing. So that's how they hear about you. Sure. And then then your agent will send them stuff and go, well, this is what she's done. So, yeah, from that point of view, it makes it a little easier to get mm. in front of someone. Yeah. So you can get in front of someone easier if you, you know, start to develop. Sure. And, and get do these auditions and get, get the roles, then things start to develop for you. And then there's such a thing as if you do a role and um, you do an audition, say, for instance, um, this will be interesting for actors, you do a role, um, you, you do the audition and someone from another part of the country gets it, okay? And, and, and you've been shortlisted. You've been shortlisted down to five, two people. Wow. And all of a sudden, uh, in the two people, that other person gets it, right? 
But then it's a big deal for the person who doesn't get it. Why? Because the person who doesn't get it, you don't understand. You were Australia's number one choice. Now, would you believe that in itself, that you were Australia's number one choice, that you were the choice in Australia? Oh. That actually really helps you. <laughs> what, psychologically or...? No, no, or it, with... it, for them, for, for them. Oh, like okay. Another person, for instance, will come along and say, I'd like to, you know, how does this... Uh, we want fern for this or whatever. Oh, I see what you're they saying. They will actually say, well, this person did this, 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 and she was Australia's number. Yeah. That actually makes a difference. I didn't know that did. But also, yeah, plus your name, plus also the fact that that producer knows producers and like... Yeah. You're looking for this type? We had somebody we had on our someone, film. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, wow. So, and, and that actually works. And well, I didn't know this. And when Hallie told me, I said, well, what does that mean? I still didn't get it. And she said, no, no, you don't understand. The fact that you were Australia's number one choice has made other people, other casting directors and other product interested. Yeah. So now they would like right. to see you in this role. Right. Do you see what I mean? So there's a lot of little things that you can benefit from. Sure. By doing auditions and doing the best you can, having fun. You want to get those auditions, don't take it so seriously. But also picking the right auditions, yeah? Well, you don't get to, I mean, you know, I'm not at that bloody stage. You know, no, but, you know, I mean, there'll be a lot of, a lot of scripts that you can audition for. Hmm. Do you as an actor, I don't know this side, but do you as an actor actually do your research on who's producing, who's doing these films? Well, no, because you get all that information from your agent. Like oh, okay. where I am, I, I, uh, Hallie is my agent. I am part of Creative Soul Management. Right. So when Hallie sends me something, <laughs> Hallie will say, this is who the producers are. Right. This is the, so you know everything. Right, There's right. nothing to research. You're, I keep you're, thinking it was, it's like, you know, I'm talking from the trenches of where I came from. <laughs> We no, all had you know, to do that. No right agents, now. nothing, yeah, you know. I'm just like, <laughs> who the fuck's producing this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I Are they going to run out of money halfway through? <laughs> Is there going to be any money? Oh, yeah. we got pizzas for lunch. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm thinking yeah, yeah, from no, that. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. So, so you know, you know. Yeah, this is know. a reputable project. This is a very reputable project. These Hollywood actors or Hollywood people are producing this. They haven't been able to find a role. Do you want to go for it? Yeah, think, sure. Yeah, great, you know. Mm. So there's not much to research where that where that's going I haven't had to do that for a while. <laughs> now, um I don't know if I should get into this or wait for the next session, but uh through this project, yeah. Something happened and then the new year, obviously we all know that uh, the coronavirus came in yeah. and stopped everything. Yeah. Stopped travel, stopped yeah. everything. Mm. You went back to teaching, but how did your teaching evolve? And that's what I want to get to because I remember you saying that your teaching stepped up mm. during the coronavirus because mm. of technology. Yeah. I know a lot of businesses that evolved and changed mm. and suffered and succeeded. Mm. Now, when it comes to teaching, I think everyone knew that everyone went with the Zoom way, you know, especially at yeah. schools mm. and Skype and things. Mm. What was the – now, which way did you go? I didn't. I thought I was going to go Zoom. We started a course at the start of March before lockdown, two weeks into the course lockdown. So yeah. I went, okay, well, we have to do something different here. Um, so I took all my class and gave them, I thought was better than Zoom, was one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one customized Skype training, which I normally charge quite a bit of money for. But I decided, no, you know, I want these guys to continue their work. So what I did was I started doing Skype sessions with these guys, um, auditions, monologues, audition um, scenes, filming them, uh, character development, you know, all the stuff that I would do in class, I thought I'm going to see how this goes on Skype. And I was so shocked at what I was able to do on Skype. Yeah. They were getting up to two Skype sessions a week depending on how much work they had chosen to do. So I put the responsibility back on the actor and I said, you know what, you can have two Skype sessions with me which are normally $200 for two Skype sessions. You're not going to pay anything near that. You've got an eight-week course and it's cheaper than what I normally pay. 
So what, the course was cheaper than the Skype or no, the Skype sessions were cheaper than the no, eight-week? No, no, no. The eight-week course is normally $560. Sure. I made it 490 and they were getting Skype sessions twice a week. Oh, so they're getting two lessons a they week. They were getting two lessons a week for eight weeks. Now, that's a lot of lessons. Two hours private. Okay. And I was charging under $500. I am charging under five hundred dollars, but what how I that, found, yeah, tell us how I what I found was because they were working with you because uh, they're working with me directly. There's no distraction. They have nowhere to hide. They're working with me. I need you to film this. You need a reader for this. If you don't have a reader, I can supply you with a reader, but I need this filmed. When I want that filmed, then you're going to oh. contact me and you're going to say, Fern, it's filmed. Here it is. I'm available for this Skype. I'll book you in for a Skype. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I didn't know whether they were acting with you on Skype. Oh, no, they, is, they are. They are as well. if it's just monologues? No, 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 no. They're doing audition scenes, which means full scenes. Sure. Now, they're either going to get a reader, but when they get a reader and they film it, when they come back to me, I will do it with them over the... Oh, okay. So they are acting sense. with me. Sure. Because what happens is they see the difference between doing it with a reader and then doing it with me. Because I'm being a teacher, I know how to push buttons. I know how to make them react differently or to shift yeah. their emotional. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I want to know whether they're listening. I want to know whether they're reacting. So what I'm finding with the Skype sessions and this particular, we called it online with Fern. But this particular course allows that for some reason they are getting to experience the organic process much quicker than they would do in a classroom. Right. Um, because they've got nowhere. It's just you and me. Organic I'm, growth? No, or organic process. Or the process. The process of, of being the character, of sure. getting into the character, understanding and experiencing what that character is actually feeling at every given moment. So they're clicking quicker. Very quick, very quick. And I, look, it surprised me. I was not expecting that. But I have had some ladies that have been to five classes of mine. You five know, courses. Five courses, sorry. Five courses of mine. Now, look, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not cheap. I'm not hugely expensive, but I'm not cheap either. And, mm. you know, you, you, spending a few grand with me is quite easy. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you want it, you work for it. That's, and if I'm the kind of teacher that you want in a classroom, those are the kind of teachers I have, which is why, you know, I only have, I think there's, there's three teachers <laughs> that I use. Mm. You're one, yeah. Shantha's the other, um, and the other person is um, Noel, Noel O'Neill no, no. that, that will come on from time to time. And now I've got the most fantastic movement teacher ever. Um, and so uh, all our teachers know what, is, what NASA expects of them. Because all of you know what it is that we're looking for, yeah. what it is that we want. And so, but what I found is some of these people that have done four or five courses with me have totally gone up two levels just by doing one online course. Because when you first said you were going to do that, uh, I was, I was hesitant, I got to say, because I, you know, I was coming from a perception that most actors would, mm. but how can you learn that way? It, oh. I, no, but being acting is a two way two way communication streak. Like where, unless you're just doing monologues, but you know, being able to act with somebody. Mm. Of of course, we're still doing that. Um, but when you were saying to me that you started to discover the skill level in individual actors improving um, mm. exponentially through a short periods of time. Mm. And you were saying, I think it's because of that personal, like they're getting two hours personal one-on-ones a week. Um, is it something you're going to continue doing? Yeah. I think I'd be stupid to stop it. You know why? Because I want, there are people that have come to me and said, I find it really difficult in class. Um, I do get distracted. I do lose focus. And I'm always considering all the things I shouldn't be considering in class, such as, am I doing it well? Did it end well? Did people like what I did? Yeah. Was my performance good? Did my teacher like it? What has everybody else got to say about it? You see, this is just just right. crap as far as I'm It's absolute crap. Now, I've got a lady in my class that had a real lot of problems with being in the classroom. By the time this girl heads back into that class, let me tell you, she's going to be a different person. You know why? Because she knows now what focus is. She knows now what distraction is. She knows what is expected of herself. And she knows what she needs to feel. She knows what the organic process is like. She knows what that feeling is. 
So I want them to get into a classroom and not be distracted by the others okay. in the class. But uh, but once learning that, it's understanding how to control that distraction because that's of course that's it is. on set. Of course uh, it is. They have to learn skill. it, which is why in class studies are imperative. Of course yeah. they are. But what I'm saying is getting them ready for a classroom with this online course. Oh, wow. I'm really... I kid you not, Wayne, I, I'm really surprised at the stuff that I've been able to get from these students. Wow. I never thought I'd be able to get stu- stuff like this. And I and I got it and it just kept – and I tell you something, you know the people that were – and maybe, maybe actors don't want that. Hey, maybe actors don't want me to see them. Maybe actors don't want me to see that sometimes they just don't feel like it. Maybe actors don't want to take responsibility and would rather put it on the rest of the people in the class. Mm. I've had actors turn around and say, oh, no, I'd much rather come into the classroom. And I think, why? I'm not getting what I want from you in the classroom, but you're quite willing to pay me this money? Do you think it's a it's a level of vulnerability? No, you know what? It's just the, the, they're either scared because they don't want to be, uh, they don't oh, want their... That total focus? Yes. So you would see flaws, more so flaws, quickly. and it would make their insecurities of course, more. And, and, of course. Okay. So it's that's very quick. It's very quick. From that, right? It's like, okay, this morning I had one and, and, you know, she was doing this thing with me and I went, okay, let's go through this script together. Let's do it together. And she'd already filmed it and sent it to me. Let's do this script. And she did yeah. it and she did a totally different thing. Then we did inner dialogue together. Then we did inner, like, so we're working together as though sure. it's the two of us. Mm. Now, just because you're not working with other actors doesn't mean you're not Learning. Sure. What's wrong with you? That's what I wanted to, that, that's why I brought it up today because it's important for people to hear that. Yeah. Because it was important for me to hear that. I mm. remember when you were explaining it to me and because you were surprised at the <laughs> level of improvement. Yeah. And um, I, I think a lot of people would be thinking like I was thinking, like how do you get that uh, with a Skype lesson? And it's nice for you to start. Well, um, you think about it, Wayne, when we're in a classroom, we're there for three hours, right? Mm. It's very rare that you will spend 20 or 25 minutes with one student. Yeah, true. Okay. So they might get maybe 10 minutes of your time that night. Probably two scenes. Got me? Three scenes maybe. Two, three, two, three scenes. Three scenes if you're lucky, right? Yeah, with redirection. With redirection. Mm. Okay, so... How much time do you really get with them? How much time do they get with you? And here's the question. How much time do you want with me? Do you want to learn this? Do you want to learn the crafty? Do you not? Or do you want to get out into a classroom and show your shit in front of everyone? Have because you, if you want to do that, that's yeah. great. But there are other schools that I'm sure yeah. would be happy to have you go in and show how wonderful you are. That's yeah. great. Look, I'm not being a bitch. Maybe I am tough. It's yeah. just the way I am. But this isn't about that. Yeah. This is about you want to learn the craft? You're going to get in class, don't you worry, and you'll be seen and you'll be heard. And all. But let's have a look at the stuff that we need to work on, which I call basics. I call basics so that when they get in the classroom, they understand the dialogue between teacher and student. What is your inner dialogue? Mm-hmm. I don't want people going, uh, what's that? Sure. Uh, you know, so all the basics, what is, what else can you do? What do I mean by that? When I talk about shifts in energy, why would I talk about shifts in energy? How, are you reading your stuff properly? Are you looking at your punctuation? There's a reason there's a question mark or an explanation mark there. Are we respecting the writer? Are we doing these things? You know what? Everyone wants to be a bloody actor. But I'm sorry. Um, not everyone is doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. And if you want to be a good actor, you've got to spend time on yourself. It's not, I will only be a good actor if I act with other people. Please get off. What what are you you thinking? Mm. You know, I didn't do that. Do you know how many years I didn't act? Mm. Who do you think I acted with? Where did I learn this stuff? And people look at you and say, you know, it was a long time ago I was trained, Wayne. So Mm. when I did all the short films and everything, I haven't been training Do you know what I mean? I haven't been training. You have to do a lot of things by yourself. And that's how I learned and that's how I ended up teaching. Yeah. I learned a lot of stuff by myself. I confronted myself. I did stuff on my own. I filmed stuff on my own. I looked at movies. I studied characters. 
this is what I did. You can't do that always in a classroom full of actors. Have you thought about incorporating both? Definitely. Definitely you know, like having uh, half, yeah, having where they... Not even half. You could have one, maybe one hour personal with each student. Yeah. And then the rest class time. So yeah. they sort of get that maybe towards the end of a course and then mm. they get that focus. Mm. Now... There's some there's some stuff that I want to talk about hmm. that's nothing to do with training. Yeah, yeah. Um, costume design and uh. and your uh, f when you run a big budget <laughs> series, uh. what how different is that? Because we've been on feature films, mm -hmm. but now we've got like a an endless, uh, you know, sort of a big budget Netflix series. Mm -hmm. uh, Sci-fi. Mm. Is it sci-fi? Action adventure. I would say it. I'm <laughs> guessing here, by the way, folks. Uh, even I don't know. But um, judging from what I've seen, it's almost action adventure sci-fi in a, a new world. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that sort of thing. But um, tell me about the makeup. Wow. Makeup was amazing. She had a team of people. Um, she had actually gathered a team, New Zealand, um, she, Kiwi. She she gathered a team. She's incredibly experienced, been all over the world. She does films everywhere for the British, for the Canadians, for the Americans, for us. And she gathered a Costume team Costume designer, not makeup. No, no, oh, makeup, makeup artist. Makeup. Okay. But makeup, uh, under uh, under the makeup and costume, they're all sort of in together kind of thing. But like the two people that I was able to meet were, Two people that have done humongous big American shows. You know what I mean? Like I never ever thought in a million years I'd ever have a makeup artist doing stuff yeah. on me or or well, well uh, Yeah, I understand. You know, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like um all the stuff that they had to do uh, for my character and stuff was like, oh my god, I can't believe these guys for are, the character. For it's the a different because you know what made me giggle then yeah. is your first short film. You had the makeup artist that worked with Ridley, Ridley Scott. Scott. I know. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. And what I can't get over is I remember running away from her all the time because I couldn't stand the makeup that was, oh, my God. Leslie Rufray. Oh, yeah, that was her name. Because yeah. just as you said that, I was, Yeah. Oh, just as you said that, I remember, um, I, I just remember, I was like, you say that, but your first short film, you had a, a Ridley Scott makeup artist <laughs> working on did. you. But this is this is completely different. Totally this is different. Uh, again the story is different. It's not yeah. so very different. Is yeah. it? Was it hours in the chair that you always hear? Uh, there was there, uh, one particular time that I had to go over there for for costume and makeup and stuff. Um, one particular time was I was in the chair for about two hours to get something done. Um, which was an incredible experience. And mm. then um, and everyone was so friendly and lovely. You've got no idea. So lovely. Did you have to do that whole thing where they put straws in your mouth and they put no. your face in a cask, you know, that plaster that yeah. goes over? Yeah. Did you have to do that? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you breathe? They put straws in no, your mouth? No, or... I did. No, no, they just left the holes open. Oh, okay. Said, yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a little bit yeah, at claustrophobic first, at first, mm. but they just made you feel so comfortable and and told you how things were going to be and you felt good. You know what I mean? Mm. So, it was, I think for me, it was um, the whole thing was very overwhelming because I'd never seen such a big set before. I've never experienced, you know, that size of production before. Um, so, costume and makeup were huge. You know, and yeah. especially costume. Costume blew me away. <laughs> yeah. uh, totally. Not, 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 not the, the costume, costume but the no, process, no, no. The process of, of, of your wardrobe. Mm. What, what, really quickly, what was that like? Unbelievable. You walked into a place and you had three people run out with tape measures over their necks and you're standing like this and everyone's measuring you up and, you know, someone's taking you down and then when every all that finishes, they say, right, you're ready for the costume designer. And you you walk in. It's not like going, you know, back in the day, you know, we used to go to 
what, salvos, salvos, second hand shops. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or we'd go shopping and and try yeah. and get things that would fit us. Mm. Yeah, and not this place. Oh no, no, no. This is a whole yeah. new ball game. And so you walk in and you've got the costume designer again, and they're all Kiwis, just magnificent people. And she's sitting with a whole big pile of books. Okay, friend, what do you think? You know, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. And you're sitting there and you're going, oh my god, oh my god, and you're looking at all this. And we're going to design this for you. Yeah. This is huge, you know, yeah. and, and uh, you know, we're going to pay $500. Um, would you mind just trying on those shoes? And if you like them, just let us know and we'll buy them. What? <laughs> Do you get to keep the water? Oh, I wish. Someone said to me that um, because this, because of what this is, that this is the first time that they're doing something as big for this thing that's incredibly popular. And I'm sounding really like so... No, I understand. So, that. yeah. So, and this is the first time they're doing something such, you know, big live action stuff mm. with, with this. And as a result, they may actually w require all the costumes to go in a museum. Oh, sure. Do you sure, know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, oh, what I would give just to keep some of the stuff. Just You've got to get some memorabilia of I something. Hope so. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering because I, I, you know, I'm wondering because, you know, the, the sort of selfies you took. And it wasn't with anything. It was just you with some of the makeup on. Oh, it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. show much. No. I wonder if that is okay to, to show people. I will check. You know why? Because I can put it over the podcast. Oh, I see. I can put it on YouTube and over this podcast. So over that moment of yeah. you talking about it, I can show the photos. Yeah. But if you can't, then yeah, you can't. Yeah. And I'd rather not get you in trouble or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> can you imagine? My... Yeah. But um, I... <laughs> There's two things that probably happen from this podcast is uh, because we, I think we have 24,000 listeners now on each wow. podcast. Um, you may get some Skype calls from overseas. You may get some, who knows, who's going to contact you for training. If it's on oh, Skype, yeah. it's not limited to well, no, it's not. to, to no, people in, uh, no, no. in Australia. No, 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 it's not. So that could be one thing. Yeah. The other is is people are going to be guessing. Do you know I've had <laughs> your students... Uh. And I should say some of my students, uh, past students, I should say, and friends, just busting my balls to find out what this series is. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I can't say anything. <laughs> I said, look, the minute I'm, um, uh, the minute Fern's able to tell people and stuff, of course, mm. but I can't, mm. so I can't say what it is. But look, it's a great series, and it will lead to hopefully um, more interesting other and other mm. other things that hopefully. could be coming. You still want to act in Raymond Feast the Magician? Magician. <laughs> oh, I'd audition to be a tree. Mm. God, can you imagine who they're going to get as Pug? Oh, Wayne. I wonder. Just, uh, I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they do with that because that's – I often wondered whether they would ever have the – Here, this is how I feel about the writer. I wondered whether they would ever have what it took to make – the magician. Well, how many books are there in that series? Twenty nine. Yeah, I think. I think, I think it's going to be. It's, it's a huge. It's 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 too. I can just it's just too, too huge yeah. a project. But they can certainly do a three hour. You know, or two. Yeah. two three well, do hours. you know what? Considering that they can do things like Game of Thrones now over a yeah, series. Yeah. You know, we're not talking Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, which mm. are huge budget three films, three films. Mm. When you can tell. A George R. R. Martin sort of Game of Thrones and over do it like that. Oh yeah, who who knows? Who knows that they can't mm. condense something like The Magician mm. in, into that? That would There's be a lot. that would be fantastic. And you know that they're capable of doing it. What you yeah. with, because of all the stuff that we've seen already. You know, I mean, I don't know how how I know that um, a lot of productions have halted because of COVID. Yeah, so they're all starting to slowly. Sure. You know, the wheels are turning again slowly to, to get. I want to see that things. sort of a thing in VR. You know, it's all filmed. Mm -hmm. Everything is like the movies. But as you put the mask on, you're inside that room watching that mm, that action. That would be amazing. So, you know, in 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 The Hobbit, when all all the dwarfs come to that hobbit's house yeah. and have di yeah, like yeah, dinner yeah, and yeah. he's just like in this mess. And you, you know? can sit in there. You sit in the corner of the room. It. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. would be that would be cool. Amazing. I mean, who knows where movies are going to go after this, and and 
how they're going mm. to evolve into new technologies and AR and VR and because really like that. when you but also when you think about it, all, it the TV series are the it, it, it is the thing today. It is. It is. You know, it's how they're telling their stories. Now. It's how they're telling the stories, but for an actor. That it's financially more viable because well, you're is. acting over especially series, uh, you know? as, especially if you know you are you have the opportunity to audition and 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 get a series regular, you mm. get a series regular role and great, <laughs> you know, out of seven out of you know, I think one of the ones that was proposed was. Uh, Seven out of ten episodes. That's a series regular role. That is. You know what I mean? That is. So um, there's a lot of that coming. There's a lot of that coming up. And not so much just here. I mean, look, we've got season two of Itch coming out. Yeah. Which I think is great because let me tell you, for those of you that haven't seen it, you know, what does Molly say? Do yourself a favor. <laughs> you you do have to see it. I mean, look, it's for four, between, the, I think the, di, di, the, the um, demographic. demographic is like between kids, 14 and 17 or 18 or whatever. But it is. But it's it a is. really good yeah. kid show. Do you know what it reminded me of uh, in a totally different way? Because it is about this meteor that falls Rock. and they find yeah. these uh, these things in it that, can, that has these that changes molecular yes, structure yeah. of, of certain things. But I also saw that, saw that show Bloom. Have you seen Bloom? I haven't. It's really good. Is it? Yeah. It's really good because it starts off in this old, in this country town. It's very Twilight Zone and sort of, and um, a flood comes through and mm. kills quite a few people. But where these people had died, mm. this flower grows with this golden bulb. Mm. Oh. And... You see how it eventuates to suddenly this old guy takes this bulb because it looks like a fruit and he eats it and he sort of feels faint and he regresses like 30, 40 years. What? And now they're in their 20s and they wake up and they're in their 20s. And the first thing they want to do is run because yeah, yeah, they yeah, were, yeah. you know, they were in the 80s and they, yeah, you know, yeah. and it was fascinating because the thing wears off. And after a while, this thing becomes a drug. So they end up, start to kill people to find, because where they kill oh the person, my God. this flower grows. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. I oh. really enjoyed it. Two seasons already. Oh, okay. I'm Two seasons. Have to look. All the Aussie actors are in there. Even some of the, you know, there was one that was in this vampire series in Netflix in America. I didn't know she was an Aussie girl and she's she's in, in this as well. I, the, the standard Aussie guys yeah, are in there, yeah, like yeah. Byron Brown and oh, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But, um, and the girl, I think the girl that was with Robert De Niro, the Aussie girl that was in um, The Lady, what's her name? She was in that uh, one where all her sons, she got nominated for Academy Award. And then she played with Robert De Niro after that. You love her. Animal Kingdom. The Aussie actress. Yeah. Oh, the, she's the, great. The, the lady. The lady. She's, she, she's yeah. in a, I don't know, she'd be in her 60s, 70s. Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. Um, yeah. God, what, what's her name? I know. Well, she's in this. She's fantastic. She's in this as well. So it's great. It's great. Um, oh, yeah, so we're doing some good stuff, you know, in the end. But Yeah. So what, yeah, yeah. you're going now back I mean, it depends when you can go back to filming. Oh, Have you been given a date for filming? No, 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 no date yet. They're trying to get a date where it can all start going again. But you've got to remember that this particular film or this particular series has, you know, a, a bunch of American actors, a bunch of English actors. Oh, and, flying. You know, and they have to fly in and, you know, go through that. Whole, yeah. Mm. So I'm not actually sure. They know that it's going to go ahead. They just haven't got a date as such. Um but also just talking about that, by the way, because I have been getting a lot of, I have actually been getting quite a few calls about Skyping, for online with firm, sure. of course, which is great. But I'm actually not going to be available in September and October. Right. Because of some gigs that are coming up. Okay. So, okay. but in-class studies with NASA will start up at the end of September. Okay. So, so um, where can people find you now? Um, Nicholsonsacademy.com. Go onto the website and have a look. And look, can I say just one thing before I... Nicholson's Academy. Nicholsonsacademy.com. Okay. Um, info at Nicholsonsacademy.com if you want to ask questions or make inquiries. Sure. 
Um, but one thing I do need to say is people, and I was going to go ahead and, and, and stop this, but um, and I haven't done it as yet, but I thought oh, I'm doing this, so I'll, I'll tell people. You can't actually apply or submit an application to NASA unless I've seen an audition tape. Okay. Unless you're doing online with Fern. If you're doing online with Fern, then we need to do a Skype and we can have a chat before you start. Sure. Um, but actually in class studies, I need to see an audition and you need to be approved before you even submit an application form. Mm, okay. And what happens is uh, what is taking place is people are submitting application forms, um, sending their audition and then putting their money in. And there are times when, you know, it's not nice to say, look, I'm really sorry, but I have to refund your money. Yeah. Um, and I know that sounds weird because normally, you know, you would like to hear about refunds, but people don't like hearing about refunds. But the, the, the reality is, is that you have to set them up in the right groups. Of course. And if they don't fit in, mm. it's, um, it's not How good you, for them no. and it's not good for the people that they're Well, no, you'll get complaints because yeah. you know what actors are like. You know, mm. I didn't get what I wanted from that person. I know that person hasn't got much, as much experience as I do. It happens and they yeah. can't bullshit me that it doesn't because it does. Yeah. They end up complaining about this course or saying, you know, those people – didn't do as much as I did. So how come, yeah, and that sort of thing happens. I don't like that. So the only time they don't have to worry about it is online with Fern, simply because I'm dealing with the individual student at their individual skill. What happens if this climaxes and your movie career just takes off? <laughs> I mean, the acting school will have to take a bit of a back step only because yeah. I'm just thinking you've done, it's not that one takes priority. The fact that you've been teaching now for 20 years. It'd be nice to suddenly just go, you know what, just going to enjoy in front of the camera. Mm. Plus it pays more. For me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah, pisses no, me off. You know, I love you. <laughs> but when I hear about <laughs> salaries you get, there is this little, you know, I get a little tiny bit, yeah, no, but that's, no. that's great. No, 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 you're, you're right. Um, and NASA will take a back step. I mean, I, I, when I say that, I mean, it will be me taking a back step from NASA. Sure. You know, okay. if I still have my acting teachers to do things, then that would be great. But, um, yeah, it is, it is, I've got to see where all this goes and just enjoy whatever I takes would enjoy place. It. I, I just want to see and enjoy and, and experience more stuff. And it's great because when I do, then it's something that I can deliver and, and talk to the students about or, or podcast with you and let them know. I would love, to, I would love that. I would love towards the, you know, when, when all this is available mm. to all of us to be able to talk specifics. Yeah. Well, it would be nice to it would be nice to talk specifics. Sorry, I'm doing this because at 4:30 I forgot these stupid smart lights um click in and go to a different color temperature and stuff and so really? we just lost a whole heap of light there and but that was it. Oh, so okay. so okay for now. All well, right. Love you. All right. And leave you Thank and you. um look forward to See speaking you again. again. Bye. Right. Bye.